Hi guys and welcome back to Hardcastle Homestead. I thought I would just take you for a little update uh, with the garden because it has been a minute since I've been on here. Been busy with life and forgetting to turn the camera on, honestly. Yeah? Uh, so some of the things that have happened as of recently, we have put in these four beds. They are six by one by ones or one by 10 inch, I think. Six feet, one foot across ish, and then about 10 inches tall. And then we've also put in this 12 by 18 inch by 10 inch, 12 foot, by the way. Um, this is gonna be a pollinator bed next to the greenhouse. Uh, and that will give me pretties this summer that I can do with some arrangements as I learn how to do arrangements. Um, garden itself, as of next week, I am planning on putting a lot of things out in the garden. Um, thank you. We are good to go. Uh, so in here, we now, I didn't think it would happen. We have daffodils or um, narcissus, I believe. And then all of the irises have made it. The tulips are still going beautifully strong. Uh, I've been stripping some of the coat off for them when they're ready. And you can tell by this. simply slides right off so what I'm doing with these is I'm making Mother's Day gifts for some of my friends who do like to garden and I'll be transplanting them into containers um, over here look at that beautiful baby so pretty tulip is about to come out and then Let's see if I can just flip you guys. I also did hang up my prayer flags. These were the very, used is the wrong word. They've been, they've had lives. They've lived in the backyard for a while and it's been going great. Um, but I'm gonna flip you guys around now. So hold tight. And then this is so much easier. So with Florette Farms up in Washington State, I did the Petite Florette Dahlias by Seed, the Bee's Choice Dahlias, the Alpenglow Zinnias, the Golden Hour Zinnias, and the Precious Metal Zinnias. And they had a really good germination rate. I'm very impressed with these. This is the first time I've ordered from Florette. Uh, yesterday, I potted the celosia from them as well so they haven't started to pop their seeds up yet but i've got the sangria celosia and the sugar spun celosia and then i've also got um calidiums you know like the uh they basically look like elephant ears they're just miniature the asparagus is going beautifully and I'm going to transplant that this week hopefully and then over here we've got a few of our common times popping up which is great the orange and yellow thyme has done very good I've got a lot of those the marjoram doing great the summer savory doing fine it took a minute and I've never grown it before, but I'm growing St. John's wort. And I believe most of these were Baker Creek, if not some were in my gardener. And then back here is the Playtime Mix Calendula. Hey, okay, Iris, are you making good choices? Okay. So we do have a few eggplant, and this was a very old seed pack, so I'm impressed I got anything. Um, the secondary one, I did not get any though. Yeah. We were supposed to get a big rainstorm today and we didn't. So now I'm like struggling with my life. Um, we've got the blue cream tomatoes, black cherry tomatoes, Amish paste, 
it's going strong I don't know what's best for you guys um, the San Marzano just a few popped up in that same with the Jersey Devil but they were some of my older seeds um, the pink brandy wine I believe was from Boar's Farm Wild Boar Farm in California if I remember right my hillbilly potato leaf tomatoes looking great the um, orange ox heart also looking good looks like they all germinated most of these I only put like five to eight seeds in them there are very few that I heavily seeded and that's because like I know I want to grow a lot of Amish paste um, we've got the mushroom basket tomato the German Johnson tomato um, I totally spelled that room wrong uh, but this one is a uh, Costaluta, I think. Maybe I did spell it right, and this is one of the new ones I haven't actually done before. Because here's my Costaluta. Uh, Kellogg's tomato, carbon tomato, and then my moneymaker, the uh, Napoli, and then we get into peppers. Have fun! Let me change hands here. Ahi mango pepper, sugar rush peach pepper. They are looking good, which makes me very happy because I did not bring them in recently with all of our weather. And then we've got our grand, I think it's grande and I just didn't put it on there. Uh, jalpeno, and just helping him along. Do a little pinch. It's not ready to come off, but I put some saliva on my fingertips and hopefully that'll encourage him to pop off. The orange spice and pumpkin jalapeno, as well as my shishito peppers, looking good. Mulatto, uh, I'm pretty sure that one's a purple pepper. I've never grown that one before. And then my purple beauty which is a bell pepper. The Hatch and the Anaheim were totally seeds that I got out of peppers like two or three years ago in the grocery store. So I was not surprised that they did not germinate. And then a few of my ranunculus are starting to come up. You can see them starting to sprout. And this is my first time ever doing this one. So, I wasn't sure what to expect on germination rate, but as a whole, they are starting to get sprouts, so that's good. I don't feel like a failure now. Um, basil is popping. The lemon balm is just starting to come up. Uh, if you're wondering about the basil, we're doing lemon and lime basil. Looks like the lime basil has not came up though, so I may have to buy some at my local nursery because I know they do grow that. Um, Genovesa basil, lettuce leaf basil, Emily, and blue spice basil. Also, I'm doing black sesame and fenugreek. They're both coming up great. And then over here, you can see cumin is starting to pop up just a little bit. And I think holy basil, I think there's one right there, if you can see him coming on up, which is great because I do struggle with holy basil for some reason. Um, we've got two varieties of spinach, the giant noble I've had for like five years. So I was expecting low germination rate. And then we've got the globe gilia. It's a flower. Uh, just one or two of the queen mix salvia popping up so far. I'm gonna give it time though. Um, and then, uh, this one's always, it always gets me. Nope, not even gonna try it. That's what it is, guys. I've got red spike amaranth which is looking great. And then I've got two different types of aster flowers and they're also popping up. Um, ooh, hello. Hey, this is a no-no. Okay, friend? No. Mommy should have been paying attention. She got a hold of some metal stakes 
and was digging in a pot. It happens. It's toddler life. We just, we have a conversation about it and then we try and correct behavior so it doesn't happen again. Okay. She's so cute, so. Yeah, you're cute. We'll keep you. Um, so we've got green bok choy, purple bok choy. Um, once we're done with the video, we go play in our tent, okay? I did put up our camping tent and that is my makeshift playroom for her. <laughs> and she is loving it. She brought half the toys in the house. So it's now her playroom. Um, we've got Falling in Love poppies, Pandora poppies, um, Crimson Feather poppies, and Black Swan poppies. And they are all popping up as well. And then on this tray, we have the Great Lakes Crisp Head Lettuce, which I have never grown before. And I see a few heads popping up, but not many. I don't see any of the freckle romaine lettuce, but that was an older seed packet. The Pablo lettuce is new and looking great. Hey, I don't like that. You gotta wait. Um, we've got iceberg lettuce, bib butter head lettuce, prize head leaf lettuce, four seasons lettuce, red romaine lettuce. I'm gonna pause guys. All right, so we're gonna rush through this next part because I did promise her we would go. So we are going to plan on going to get iced coffee after I make this video. So she's trying to amuse herself. But okay, here we go. to the seeds now. Um, so kind of going over those lettuce, a lot of my new ones, as you can see, have done great in their germination. Um, over here it is a little bit older seeds because some of them I have had since 2021. So like the butterhead, that's all it's popped up so far. Um, a handful of the red romaine have popped up, which is still okay. It's gonna be plenty of lettuce for us. Uh, I'm doing the giant red mustard seed, which that one's like 2001, 2000, or 2021, 20, 2022 seed. So that one's doing great with its time. And then a brand new one to me this year, and I'm kind of surprised on the germination, maybe it just needs more time, um, is the Pink Surprise Calendula. This one is new to me this year. And then also, if you haven't noticed, the rearranging is done, which is great. You can see here, I've got my bench in the corner, um, and we'll go through the rest of this too, but it is a full U shape now in organization. Um, so let's see, we've got all of our onions. They're going strong. I need to get this cabbage, in, or not cabbage, uh, this broccoli over here. And then all these kales put into the garden, like sometime today later. Uh, the lavender is looking good, as is the marshmallow. It's starting to get their true leaves on the marshmallow. Don't know if you guys can see that. Um, and then the chamomile took a little bit of a hit with the heat, and this is one reason why a lot of people tell you not to use the heat pads. Um, but yeah, the chamomile took a hit, but some of it survived, which is fine. And then I had a second pack and planted it directly into the garden. Um, I went to Costco, which is always a dangerous game in the spring. So now I'm the proud owner of uh, four varieties of dahlias by the tuber. Uh, the blueberries came from Lowe's. They are legacy blueberries and they are late bloomers. And I will be putting them out next week into containers in the garden. Um, when it comes to me saying container though, it's still a raised bed. So it's not a true container. It will have an open bottom to the ground. It just helps with watering. Uh, on top of the dahlias, I also got pink cannas. Uh, they're called City of Portland canna, but most of the tags I wrote pink canna just to make it easy on writing. And then a bunch of elephant ears, like the big green ones. The elderberry is looking beautiful. And then the rose bushes are coming in. Uh, this is what we got left on our soil bag. This is the second bag I bought. And then over here, I'm still doing research, and if you've ever grown them, uh, 
your opinion would be great. I've never done the JFK roses with the fragrant collection, but I saw it and it was pretty, so I said sure. I, I will try to grow these roses because I love roses and I love that my husband hates roses because he likes to walk in the yard barefoot and he especially loves doing it right after I prune the rose bushes back in the spring, which there will be more changes in the future video, but this whole pollinator garden situation will be changing very, very shortly. By shortly, it'll be as of next week. Um, I'm gonna be doing a swap with my echinacea and all the other kind of stuff and selling some of my other stuff. And I'm gonna make this more of like a walking path with potted plants, I think is what I'm gonna do. And then some of them I'm gonna keep cause like I love my sedum. Uh, so over here, my sedum. And I really do want to keep it, but I will probably either be putting it in the front yard garden, which is eventually going to be a native garden, or maybe in a pot. I definitely want to hold on to it though. I do love my sedum. Um, and so do my pollinators in the fall. But this is just a really quick video to show you what's going on in the greenhouse. Now we're going to go get iced coffee and iced tea. Uh, at Seven Brew because they are doing a buy one get one this week and I'm totally taking advantage of that for us. Uh, we do look like we're having thunderstorms rolling in so hopefully all goes well and the greenhouse does fine. I'm letting the air out because when I got home today it was sitting about 85 degrees in there because I shut it last night thinking we were gonna get rain early in the morning while I was at work and I didn't want it to flood or at worst case scenario also be lifted up off the ground because they were saying heavy winds or strong winds. But with all of that being said, we've got my hubby's birthday gift put together. So now that that's put together, I expect us to grill out more, do some fresh roasted veggies. If you've got a great Blackstone grill top recipe, please share with me in the comments below because we are looking for for what we can cook on it. Honestly, it's new to both of us. We've always been uh, charcoal grill people and now we are converting to propane. So we're gonna see how it goes. But guys, like always, I just wanna make sure you always know that I'd love to see you guys go outside and get a little bit dirty. Bye.